3HL 104.5 The Zone. Kevin Byard has been traded by the Titans to the Eagles. Terrell Edmonds, safety comes over. Fifth and sixth round pick also. 111 straight starts, if my math is correct. And if it's not, I'm going to bring in Mike Keith to uh, correct me. But that goes back to his rookie season of 2016. Um, wow. Held it down, man. Held it down. Mike Key, voice of the Titans with us on 3HL. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, producer Joe Hung. Mike, what's up? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Just getting back from uh, Evansville, Indiana and the quarterback club there. Oh, ah, nice. What did you have to say in Evansville today, Mike? Uh, we talked about a lot of things. It's a, it's a fantastic group. It really is. We talk a lot of college football and all about the NFL, mm-hmm. and they're certainly interested in the Titans. And we, I mean, it's just, it's one of my most fun things to do every year. Cause it's a, it's a group of people who know their stuff and, and really make me work for it. So I enjoy that a lot. <laughs> Did Dude. you speak to them prior to the Kevin Byer news today? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> Do you any, and, uh, probably, and they probably think they probably think I was holding out on them, but I I didn't have any idea. Yeah, <laughs> you and Rut B uh, hit any of the casinos up there, Mike? While you were there, I've been there before. <laughs> I, I'm aware that they are there, but uh, I'm aware it's been a long time. Certainly did not today. Did you know? Uh, quick note about one Don Davenport. When I first met her, she would go on these trips to go to the casinos. <laughs> like, yes, I used to see her in the casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, as I as I walked by <laughs> from the outside, it. as I cut through to a restaurant or something. <laughs> All right, let's let's work ourselves through this uh, Kevin Byer deal. So, for those just tuning in, the Titans have traded Kevin Byer to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, uh, Terrell Edmonds will come over, former first-round pick out of Virginia Tech, five years with the Steelers, played in this year with the Philadelphia Eagles, and a fifth and sixth round pick. Um, I, I guess let's start with this. Um, this is a tough can one I, for can fans. Can I start with something? Yes, sir. Real quick. Uh, as a Titans employee, I feel it's important for me to just say okay. that the trade has not been confirmed by either side yet. Okay. And so I've just got to and, and understand report. I, I certainly respect all the people reporting it, but I just feel like I need to say up mm-hmm. front, I'm talking about the reports. Okay. Right. So, can can okay. we start with what Kevin Byard means to this market and what he has meant to the franchise until this point, trade or no trade? Well, there, the, the important thing about Kevin is the quality person he is and how much, um, the, the part of the MTSU community has gotten out of him. I mean, you're his age and you've already had your college number retired. That's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I got to be there that night and it was so special and everybody there was so happy for him. The fact that he um, in the past has been the United Way spokesperson, he and his wife um, have been the United Way spokespeople and just to see him with, every kid and every reporter and, you know, the, the quality that he shows in dealing with everybody is top notch. The other part of it too, from a historical standpoint is we've never quite had one like him that played at middle, had such a tie to the region already, and then came to us and became a star. Now we've, you know, we've had some Tennessee kids, University of Tennessee guys who've come here and have done that. But there w- there was a sort of a grab to him in a very different way because he was, you know, the guy who comes in, wasn't invited to the combine, mm-hmm. plays so well at middle and, you know, and then start becomes a starter basically midway through his rookie year and, you know, just did a, just did a phenomenal job for this team in, in every way, shape and form. So there is, there's quite an attachment to him from the personal standpoint, the, the trade part of it is where you have to step back and be a bit agnostic. And that's that's kind of the harder thing to do when you value the person so much. You don't want to disqualify the value of the person. And yet you have to when you look at it as the value to the trade. So if uh, these reports are accurate... 
Right. Mike. <laughs> and I'm not and I'm not saying they're not Dawn. I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. You have to say that. Yes, absolutely. Um because but... nobody nobody from either team has commented or confirmed it. It didn't go into the transactions, all of this. I think if we're gonna hear something tonight, there will be probably something rather brief pending physicals. So right. that's why I say that, Don. I'm not yeah. trying to be a smart guy for sure. No, no, no. I totally I, I know exactly what you're saying here. Um, which is why I prefaced it with that. Um, no, you're giving me the business is what you're doing. No, That's I'm right. not. You know I'm not. No. Yes, she is. Well, this, but, but this is also what I'm going to ask you. If this, sure. if the reports are accurate, what did the, does this Kevin Byer deal mean for the Titans? Well, I think what it means at this point is they are in some ways uh, taking down the age of the roster a little bit taking off some salary in, in 2024. It's not a big savings for 2023, but for 2024. But I think the it other is, part yes. of it, too. I'm sorry? It is for 2024. Yes, yeah, you're right. It is. Yeah, it's like yeah. $14 million it, or something. It, it puts them number two in, ca- in cap space uh, in yeah. 2024. But the, but the other thing in that it does, it, it doesn't tie them to one more thing going forward. And that's something is they, I think they want to have the flexibility to do a variety of things. And it doesn't mean that people are, who are here are not coming back. It doesn't mean that necessarily at all. It means they want the flexibility to make whatever choices they make. I, I think the other thing too, it's a conversion of the Titans as they start to work toward being more of an outside dominated team. And mm-hmm. I think if they're going to be dollars that are going to be spent, I mean, obviously, Imani Hooker makes good money. He doesn't make what Kevin, you know, makes. But it's going to be about corners. It's going to be about outside linebackers. You know, it's it's going to be about wide receivers. It's going to be about, you know, guys who play on the outside. And it's obviously going to have to be about quarterback, too. But this game, because of seven on seven Mm -hmm. in high school, this game is about outside. This game is not as much about inside unless you have a Jeffrey Simmons who is incredibly dominant and and can be a difference maker. I don't think you're going to see as many guys get paid the same way. The same way you're not seeing running backs get paid the same way. This game is evolving, and I think this is part of that evolution. That's just my opinion, but I think that's where you're going to see it go as they try to get faster they try to build up more talent at the corner position, more talent at other positions that, you know, the, the, you can never have enough corners. You can never have enough edge rushers. Unfortunately for running backs, you can find running backs. Unfortunately for safeties, you can find safeties. Unfortunately for inside linebackers, you can find inside linebackers. Yeah. That, that's just where the game is going right now, particularly on defense. And the Titans, if you look at historically what they have done and how they've built their roster, it's not that, you know? I mean, that's fair to well, say, I, right? I mean, I mean, it's it's been – I just think the game continues to evolve. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm watching the replay of Miami and Philadelphia. I mean, look at these two teams. Yeah, yeah. Look where, look where they're – right. That's where their premiums are. So how are you going to stop a really good quarterback? You're going to hit him by rushing the passer. How are you going to defend four receivers? You better have four cornerback-like players. Your your base defense now is not a 4-3 or a Mm -hmm. 3-4. It's a 4-2-5. That's your base defense in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas. And and generally, you know, you you look at – players and the skill sets I mean the cover skill set is massive and generally the better cover skill sets are with corners but I you know I just think you 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 allocate pieces in your salary cap to different places and when you allocate those pieces it means you can't have something else Yep. You know, it's like when, when they paid Derrick Henry, they couldn't re-sign John M. Smith because they, they allocated that money somewhere else. Was it a good choice? Well, sure. I mean, Derrick's, Derrick's been an awfully good player. But those are the choices that you make. It's not a bad or good. 
it's about those choices. I think under Rand Carthon and with Mike Vrabel having more of a say-so, my belief is you are seeing them look at reallocating those pieces over a period of time. So I don't necessarily believe that it's so much about Kevin can or Kevin can't. I think it's about what are we going to allocate toward the safety position going forward. We think we're out here playing chess, and then we bring Mike Keith on the show. The voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, with well, us I mean, on three HL. You know, I got a great lesson early <laughs> on in this from Floyd Reese, and you know, he talked to me a lot about because I, I talked to him philosophically about why you do certain things, and you know, he and Bill Polian had a very similar scheme. Is they they wanted to highlight their best assets. And, and get their, their best assets with as much help as they could possibly get. And, and in essence, they paid 12 or 13 guys, and then the other 40 guys were kind of rookies or undrafteds or veteran free agents who moved around because the sense was that you would be in a position where your best players were so good they could, they could win. And so you didn't allocate your money to 25 guys. You allocated your money to about a dozen. You know, in, when yeah. Indianapolis was doing what they were doing, they allocated almost no money to defense, none. Right. But they did pay Freeney. They did pay Mathis. Why? Because they both rushed the passer, you know, and they, they had some pass rushers, you know, that, but every year their back seven, it felt like they changed unless Bob Sanders was, was playing it seemed like their back seven changed all the time, you know? And that was because they just shifted guys in and out. They drafted guys to play now. They signed guys to play now. They weren't as much about development because they had Peyton Manning. Well, when we had Steve McNair and Eddie George <laughs> and some guys who could really rush the passer on defense, we kind of did the same thing. And that there are decisions that you make, and, and I just think – Phil, this is a sign of philosophy. I thought this when they asked him to take a pay cut in the offseason. Yeah. I, 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 and, that was, and that was really the first hint is that they were going to, to make some philosophical changes. Hi, let me ask you this, Mike. Well, growing up, I uh, grew up in a single-parent household. Um, I was um, a lot of times looked at as the father, as the big brother, the stepbrother, the uncle, a lot of other things, Rather, regardless if I, I wanted it or not. You and your position, Mike, are the voice of reason for Titans fans. Sometimes you like you, you get that platform, whether you love it or not, Mike. What, what do you say to the fans that need soothing um, to make them understand or mm -hmm. to try to talk them off of, man, this, this really hurts, and which it does, but – how do you soothe them and get them focused on the next game? And this is what it's about. This is how you evolve and how you get to those franchises, like what you just mentioned, looking at the Eagles um, and, and the Dolphins play. I think th the difficulty in that, Ron, is because people are so emotionally attached to this person, and mm -hmm. he has been a really good player for us. Right. And he has answered the bell. Mm -hmm. No matter when it was all going wrong and, and guys didn't think they could play, you know, he went. Yeah. And in the seven-game losing streak, he was still out there. He made the two picks against Dallas in the game that they had absolutely no chance in because they were – you know, playing with about six first-string NFL players. Yeah. Um, but that's Kevin. Right. And, you know, when I got the word initially today, the, the first thought is about Kevin. I did an interview with Kevin in England 10 days ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun, just like everything with Kevin is. My hope is that, as a person, that Kevin will go to Philadelphia. That's his hometown. Uh, he's got people there. It's obviously a good system. It's a good team. I hope he'll have tremendous success. And, you know, I hope that because he's going somewhere that's a Super Bowl favorite in his hometown, that, you know, that there will be a time where it'll be different. But at the moment that it happens for, for anybody and everybody, it's raw. Right. And, and again, the, the, the difficult part is really analyzing the football part of it. Right. And the and, and, and not just, listen, 
will they put as good a safety out there on Sunday as Kevin Byard against the Falcons? I don't know. Right. No. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who will go out there. <laughs> But, you know, but that's regardless, the whole thing. Will it be not. Edmonds or will it be, you know, Molden or Carter? You know, you don't know that. But you have to look beyond this Sunday as to who the be- who the best safety would be to be out there. Because, like I said, I, I think I think it's a lot more about philosophical and about where this franchise is going to go. They get two draft picks, uh, so they're now back to eight. Uh, be interested to see if it's their six from the Ugo Amati trade that they get back, mm-hmm. um, which could be a lot higher six than, than what Philadelphia's would be. Um, you know, you're, so you're, you look at the rookies who've made this roster and you look at the cap room that they have. And, and listen, the rookies who made the roster this year, they don't have to make the roster next year. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, they, they may be replaced by, you know, seven free agents. Yeah. You know, with all the that, money that's, that's available. Yeah. Yep. Right. Well, but, or, or that they, and, and, you know, they may choose to apportion the money in a different way. We, we certainly have a quarterback question right now. Definitely true. Yeah. Well, you know, cause you don't have the, the starting quarterback healthy right now and he is not available or he's, or he's not under, I should say he's not under contract for next year. Right. He he could come back. I mean, but that's what I'm saying is you want everything on the table as a possibility for, for what you look at, you want to be able to sit down and have as many options as possible. And whether you agree with it or not, this move, if it goes through is a move that opens up another possibility. Yeah. A couple of points based off that answer, which I, I thought was really good, good stuff. Um, a lot of people are like, okay, what are you going to get for a fifth-round pick? Well, now they've accumulated some of these these third-day picks that you theoretically could move up and turn those into third, fourth, whatever. I wanted well, to make that, that point. Yeah. But but also, like you mentioned, who's going to trot out there at safety. Is, is safety a position where a newly acquired player could get out there theoretically immediately? I would think so. He's been playing. He's played in all seven games. Nine tackles yesterday. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing. And, I mean, this is a guy who has roughly 80 career starts. I'm looking at it right now. He's 78 career starts in the league, and he played for Pittsburgh. He's 6'1", 217. And, you know, but could he have a role? You know, could he play something in a role on Sunday? I, I mean, I don't know. Um, what, I, what I do know. Yeah, hopefully Molden is back. Right, right. There's that. And, and Carter has been reliable and may get a chance. But. Let me remind you of a couple of fifth round picks. Jayon Brown was a pretty good fifth round pick. Oh yeah. Avery Williamson was a pretty good fifth round pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Josh Wiley's a pretty good fifth round pick. Dude, I think he's going to be a star. Yeah, I think he's a he's a really <laughs> good player, and you you didn't want to. I mean, you just couldn't go into this draft with a one, two, a four, and three sevens. Right. I mean, you just can't do it. And yeah, now, and, and they theoretically, might they, they might not be done, you know? Well, that's right. I mean, the trade deadline's not for eight days. And, again, they're not fire sailing. That's, that's not what this is about. This is about getting some opportunities to do some things to, you know, in, in their mind, put themselves in a position where, you know, they have more options going forward this year and into next year. Good they stuff. could take these picks. Who knows? I mean, they could take picks and turn around and trade for somebody. Right. I mean, who knows? But yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I should have made that point when I was making my draft pick point. <laughs> Good stuff, Mike. Appreciate you, uh, especially on a busy day like this. And uh, always enjoy the visit. And uh, good luck on Sunday. We'll be listening, man. On at 6 o'clock tonight with the Mike Vrabel Show. Yeah. Oh. Maybe it'll no go down. No head coach, though. Off the bye. <laughs> oh, no head coach off the bye. I was going to ask. Who's filling in? He's a smart man. <laughs> Well, he couldn't really comment anyway. I mean, I, I think, That's like I said, true. won't surprise me if you don't see a statement, but I don't think you're going to get any, you know. I, he talks at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. And I think that's probably going to be the – I mean, it could change. But Sp- Speaking of statements, yeah. Kevin Byard has released a statement, which yes. we'll read when we come back. <laughs> so so we, oh, know, wow. we know it's true. I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. He just yeah. tweeted it. <laughs> Long-time listener, uh, not first-time caller. But uh, thank, you, thank you, Mike. Good stuff, man. 